Welcome back to the series of videos on how to make mini coracles. So I've left it overnight. The uh, glue has dried, and just like uh, leather shrinks when it dries, the PVA glue tightens the paper around the frame, which is really good. Uh, it's still a bit damp on the on the, the, the rim, <laughs> the base that will become the edge, the upper edge. Uh, but that's good because it means I'll be able to fold the paper around. That's once I get it out of the string. <laughs> well, that's it ready to pop out. Can you see inside? There's the rib cage holding it all nice and close together and a skin to make it uh, keep the water outside and you dry inside. And these edges here can be folded over. Now, if it was leather, you would stitch to hold uh, the skin onto the frame. Lots of jaggy bits. Now, you can do all sorts of things to get rid of the jaggy bits. You could go around with a knife. You could use some secateurs. Our um, good big pair of pliers also works. Now, these bits here are quite good as tholes for bearing your oars against if you need them. But because this is a toy, I'm going to get rid of all the spiky bits instead. Who knows? Maybe I'll do some tests and you can see I can put a mast and sails in this. You see how it's rocking? It's because it's got a really round bottom. If you'd use the wood to squash things down, then perhaps you could have a flatter base on it. The other thing you can do to make, make it more stable is to um, put ballast in the bottom. Uh, we use bags of sand in a full size cutter and that makes it really stable. If you've got a big piece of water to use this in, then you can test and see whether it just floats on the surface and wobbles. What happens if you put sand in the bottom? Does it become stable? If you put too much sand in though, what's going to happen? Of course, it'll sink. Remember these offcuts here? You can uh, turn into charcoal for drawing with. And I'll do another video on that. Hmm. When I've got time to sit around the fire in the evening. Maybe I'll tell some stories on the Floating Monastery channel as well. So the last thing to do is to make it look nice and finished. Well, yeah, handy tip. Um, if you have leftover uh, glue, <laughs> then a wee bit of cling film covering over the top will keep the air out so that it's still nice and wet for when you want to work on it the next day.
taking these strips and folding them a little to keep them nice because it's the finished edge and I'm taking it down into the bolt not the whole way because I like being able to see the ribs but just to make it look like it's folded over the top Can you imagine having to do this with uh, the rawhide skin of an animal? The rawhide would be sewn with needles going through from one side to the other. So it's not quite the same as sewing if you were sewing onto cloth. Uh, it's more lacing. Almost done now. All the cutters we've built or I built uh, as part of Clune have been given names. Uh, we have the Hopeful Puffin that was not built by me uh, but was built some, by some teenagers in a large hiking village. We have Broad Bean that was um, uh, built by me in my back garden. Then we have uh, Max that was started in this workshop and then finished as a project with Maxwellton High School that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, well, actually, Max exists, it's fine, but the school has become amalgamated with lots of other schools to become a super school in northwestern Fries. And we have Catkin was built on the banks of Loch Ken or the River Dee, depending on how you look at it, um, out of sticks in a week one summer. What will we call this? Maybe you can think up a name and send it to Clune or to Wordsmith Crafts and uh, yeah the most popular name we might choose, but unlike certain governments, I'm not guaranteeing that we will choose it. Oh, Boaty Boatface would be quite a good name for it, or Cara McCurraface. But I've suggested those two now, so you have to think of something better. I did build a boat called Beardy Beardface once. Well, the boat wasn't called that at the start, and at the end it was a charred pile of ash on the beach. It's part of the Viking festival in Thursday. I was a lot of wood steering to work out how to do it, and it wasn't entirely authentic. But it burned well. And it looked okay, as long as you were standing a respectable distance away from it. <laughs> anyway, this will just be left to dry now. And probably the next few videos will be about experimenting with it and, well, seeing how it floats, how it sails.